Hello, welcome to this video discussing some of the rules of Sudoku. And this video is intended for beginners who are still learning, uh, learning more about the game of Sudoku and would like to see kind of a visual discussion of the rules of the game. Sudoku is a game of logic. It's a game of deductive reasoning. It's a game of figuring out which numbers go in which spaces on the grid. And as you can see, the Sudoku grid is made up of 9 by 9 squares. So a total of, what, uh, 81 squares altogether? Is that right? Um, and, uh, sorry, 81 spaces, rather. Uh, and within this grid, within these 81 spaces, there are rows that go from left to right, like this row here at the top with the numbers 5, 9, 7, 4, 3, etc. There are rows. There are columns, which are the vertical sections right here, the like this one uh, with the number 5, 1, 4, 9, and on down. And then there are squares, which you can see uh, denoted within these borders, these 3 by 3 squares uh, as well. So these are the three basic sections or segments of the grid that you have to be concerned about when you're playing Sudoku. And within each row, the numbers 1 through 9 appear. Numbers 1 through 9 in the 9 spaces. Within each column, the numbers 1 through 9 appear. And within each square, the numbers 1 through 9 appear. And your goal in Sudoku is to place the numbers on the grid without repeating any of those numbers, 1 through 9, anywhere within a row or column or square. So, for example, if we look at this top row, there are already seven numbers placed, right? There are only two blank spaces remaining. We've already placed, uh, you know, just starting out, we already see that the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, and 9 have been placed. So that means that these two blank spaces have to contain just by simple process of elimination, these two blank spaces have to contain the numbers 6 and 8. And just by the rules of the game, we know that the number 6 and 8 cannot appear more than once within the same square or column. And so that's how we can use the rules of Sudoku to identify which number goes in which space. Because we know we need a 6, we know we need an 8 in these two spaces. And we see a number 6 right here within this, uh, within this vertical column. So that means that this blank space at the top cannot contain the number 6. So instead, the 6 has to go over here. And that means, just by process of elimination, there's only one blank space left in this top row and only one number left to fill the space, and that would be the number 8. And to make sure we're on the right track, we can click Check Solution. Right here on the left, there's a button that says Check Solution. When you click Check Solution, both of the numbers we've just placed on the board are in green, so we know we're on the right track. So let's see. So that's kind of the the simplest rule of Sudoku is that you can't replace any numbers 1 through 9 or sorry you can't repeat any numbers 1 through 9 within a row or column or square and you just have to kind of use that simple guidance to determine your your strategy your, your deductive pattern of thought as you move throughout the puzzle um, for example, uh, another, it's not really a rule, but it's kind of a, you know, uh, a strong recommendation in Sudoku is that you shouldn't try to guess which numbers go where, right? Because you might be tempted when you're trying to solve a Sudoku puzzle to, uh, you know, just kind of randomly 
guess, you know, randomly assign a number to a space, or if you're trying to, you know, choose between two numbers, um, either one of which could potentially go into a blank space, you might be tempted to guess and just say, oh, I can't figure it out, so I'm going to say that the three goes there and the five goes there, yeah, and leave it at that. But the problem with that is, um, you might you might be wrong, and if you guess wrong in Sudoku putting the wrong number in the wrong space can set you off down the wrong path that's going to lead to um, you know failing to correctly place any other numbers uh, and it might you know prevent you from solving the puzzle altogether so instead of guessing uh, again it's not really a rule per se but it, uh, you're, you're very strongly encouraged um, to just keep thinking through the puzzle, keep analyzing your options at every step of the way, and keep ruling out certain numbers that you know um, can't go in each space. And then over time, the, the puzzle, you know, more and more of the puzzle will, will reveal itself. Uh, for example, uh, in this case, we've just placed the number 8 and the number 6 in this top row. And the fact that we've placed those two numbers, that gives us additional clues, additional help to fill in these other areas that are affected by those newly placed numbers. For example, this upper left square contains now the numbers 1, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 9. So we know that the only numbers missing are 2, 3, and 7. 2, 3, and 7 need to go in these blank spaces. So what we need to do is, uh, you know, rather than guessing blindly and just saying, oh, you know, let's put a 2 there and a 7 here and a 3 here, instead we can look for evidence, we can look to the adjacent rows, columns, um, and or rather, you know, in this case the adjacent rows and columns that that feed into this square and that affect the blank spaces to look for clues. So in, in this case, we know we need to find a 2, or a 3, and a 7. I see a 7 right over here. You see that 7 when I'm circling it with the cursor? In this row, there's a 7. So the 7 cannot go here. And in this column, there's a 7. So the 7 also cannot go here. So these two spaces have been ruled out for the number 7. So that means the 7 has to go in the one remaining space where it could go, which is right here. Now we need a 2 and a 3. Very quickly, I've spotted a 2 right next door to that blank space. So we know that the 2 cannot go there, because you can't have two number 2s right in the same uh, in the same row. So the 2 cannot go there. So the 2 has to go in that space right there. This is all just uh, you know kind of simple deductive reasoning, simple process of elimination. There's no guessing involved. We're just you know building upon that simple rule of the game, which is you cannot repeat the numbers 1 through 9 within the same row or column or square. That leaves us with just one remaining blank space in this upper left square. And we know just from simple process of elimination, remembering which numbers are already placed on the grid in this square, we know that that space must contain the number 3. And so there it is. Um, so it's pretty simple. Uh, Sudoku is a deceptively complicated game because it uh, the rules of the game are really quite simple, but the variations on the game, the, the, the number of possible combinations of numbers within these 81 spaces on the grid is nearly infinite. There's, uh, there's, there's just an, a nearly infinite variety of possible Sudoku games that could be generated. And every single time you play, you're going to see a different combination of numbers, different numbers that are already provided to you, different numbers that are still hidden, different clues that you have to analyze, different, different patterns to spot, different opportunities to uncover. And, and that's what makes the game so much fun and so, so devilishly challenging is that it's always something different. You take this simple premise, nine numbers, one grid, one rule, and you can turn it into one of the most popular and beloved and 
fascinating logic games in the world. So thank you for listening, and we hope you'll enjoy many fun and happy games of Sudoku. Sudoku.